recording. I was just going to say, are we recording? <laughs> are you sure we're recording? Are we recording now? We are now. Well, all right then. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And welcome once again to the Blurring the Lines podcast. This is episode 133. And it feels like we've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> a long time. Feels like... <laughs> It feels like we've been doing this for at least 133 weeks, and I know it's been more than that. I mean, not consecutively, but mm -hmm. it's 133 weeks because 133 mm -hmm. episodes, right? So, yep. uh, yeah. So I am your host, Peter Nicolaitis, and with me is always, is always, well, is always. I guess is always, as, is, as my host, <laughs> Adam Bell. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Well, what's happening? We, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we actually have a lot of things to cover today for a hodgepodge episode. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get right to the good stuff while my coffee is still warm, though. Is that okay, okay. if we uh, order, change the order up a little bit? Uh, sure. Cool. So, um, listeners, you probably know that uh, I used to own a coffee shop. I really don't consider myself much of a coffee snob, right? Um, uh, but with coffee, especially in this part of the country, uh, often goes donuts. Mm -hmm. And I never really considered myself to be a donut snob, but <laughs> I kind of stopped going to Dunkin' Donuts after I found out that there was a lot better. Now, I'm no, I don't turn my nose up at a good Dunkin' chocolate cake donut. I love yeah. those. But when I found out a couple days ago that Dunkin' had released a new Halloween-themed spicy ghost pepper donut, I had to try it. <laughs> and I'm going to do that here on the podcast. Wow. So it's a, Apparently, it's strawberry. And um, I, I heard a couple of news or saw a couple of news articles on it where they're challenging people, like, you know, give one to your friends and film their reaction. <laughs> so I figured, well, let's film my reaction right here on the podcast. Let's now, see. Adam, you know that I'm no stranger to um, hot foods. Yeah, you've got a, uh, um, a an iron gut for sure. <laughs> what about my, what about the taste buds and you know the tongue and stuff? I mean that that part feels it first. Yeah, yeah, you've got. I mean, I guess you have a concrete tongue and a. <laughs> <laughs> and a steel mouth. <laughs> a steel mouth. Excellent. So I'm going to record this also from uh, from my from my phone, so I can just you know have this for posterity. But uh, yeah. yeah. So so what's going on is I will be eating a uh, the new Dunkin' Donuts spicy ghost pepper donut, and um, let's just dive right in. All right. Let's let's do this. Are you going to eat the whole thing, or are you just going to get one bite? What do you think? I think you'll eat the whole thing and then you'll have uh, uh, the mm. repercussions after that. So to give, while, while, Peter, while Peter is munching away on his tasty treat, we were in Nashville and Nashville has, is known for its hot chicken. Well, one of the um, restaurants, which is no longer there where we went, uh, oh, Prince's back. Hot Chicken, they went back, they, they have a uh, cart or like a truck and they serve out of the truck. So this was kind of a store. They left the store and went back to the truck. Uh, so Peter ordered like seven. I don't remember. It was, it was the inferno. It was the hottest. And the woman behind the counter, he says, she's, he says, well, do you like it that hot? She says, oh, no, I never eat anything that hot. <laughs> and, and so Peter got the, the absolute hottest that was possible. Which was 800 degrees hot chicken. Yeah. And I got the uh, 100. I got the, the least. Well, it was a 200. No, I got, it may have been a 200, but I got the least heat that they offered. Okay. Because I thought I did, I did 246. And I thought two was the lowest, but. And that may know. have been, I may have gotten the 200. I know I got the lo the lowest heat that they had. And. I was disturbed physically while eating it and the whole next morning until it left my system and it left us, it left my system burning all the way through. And Peter says, mm, I, I might have a sensation of heartburn 
later in the evening. But that was all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, not to take away from that story, but I have now finished the ghost pepper donut. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the hottest donut I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. um, as far as hot foods go, no, it's not. But mm -hmm. I got to say, I like it. I, um, I could see myself doing this again tomorrow. So it had like a strawberry glaze. Strawberry you... glaze with, um, yeah, with, with, a, with a pepper finish. I mean, I feel the pepper. There's definitely, there is definitely pepper in this. Do you taste it or just feel it? It's, feel, you taste some too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not um, it's not as pronounced. Like for ghost peppers, there's got to be like just microscopic, you mm -hmm. know, traces of this. Mm -hmm. Like this is comparable heat to what I would say is like um, you know like jalapenos normally feel like. Okay. So I'm gonna stop my close my own recording here. <laughs> Thanks, viewers. Bye. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I just ate. I just took the challenge, and I'll post that to Twitter later. You know. And, Give, give Duncan their props. I like it. I like the idea. Spicy anything. I'm totally down with it. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I'm drinking hot coffee, mm -hmm. which is amplifying the, the effects of the heat mm -hmm. a little, like, you know, ever so slightly. So <laughs> it's not, you know, this is, this is nowhere even in the same zip code as threshold of pain when it comes to heat to hot foods. Yeah. It's pleasantly warm. Mm-hmm. That's, but, that's again on the Peter scale of insanity. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I like Tabasco. I put Tabasco on everything, and that's yeah. my heat level. That's what I like. It, 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 this feels similar to Tabasco. Mm -hmm. Classic Tabasco. Yeah, it's it's close. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. I think you should try it. I think you could definitely handle this donut. Yeah. <laughs> All mm -hmm. right. All right. So we're off to a great start. We're I mean, I, a, and I mean that. Start. I mean, and for once, I'm not being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not, like I said, we're, we're not rebuilding your car or your computer or your, your watch or your phone or <laughs> your glasses. I know, right? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> actually, it's, it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, so it's been a week uh, since I yanked the original four gig stick out of my old HP computer here. And it's running fine. Mm -hmm. so, cheers. Cheers. Yay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, what else do we want to cover first? Apple stuff? Well, uh Sure, sure. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. So no rhyme or reason. So well, why don't you go first? You put you put the uh, iPhone 12 on the list. So I I, you know, I've been waiting for the iPhone 12. We uh, we thought we we guessed at what the name might be, and it is 12, just like you thought it might be. iPhone 12. iPhone 12. Now. So they've got the they've got the pro. They once again come out with the pro version. So they there are four phones, and they're not all four coming at the same time. Two are coming now. Two are coming in November thirteenth. So you could pre-order today, mm -hmm. uh, but you won't get it until the twenty third on the iPhone twelve or the iPhone twelve Pro. Right. The iPhone 12 mini and the tr uh, Pro Max, they won't ship until November 13th. So the exciting thing, or an exciting thing, the iPhone 12 mini is once again in the form factor of the iPhone SE, <laughs> which I really like the small iPhone form factor. Yep, and similar shape to the iPhone 4. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And flat so it, edges. Flat edges, and it's supposed to have um, it's supposed to have a bigger screen because the uh, the old i the last SE which I have still, you know, there was a lot of screen space that was black black. You know, it was just you know where the button was, you know, that wasn't screen, and up at the right. top where the mic was, that wasn't screen. So you had a much smaller screen than you had footprint where the, the new mini fills up yep. the full footprint. Yep. So, so that's nice and uh, gives you a little more, but I, uh, I don't think I could go back to the smaller phone. You know, that's <laughs> the thing. I, I resisted for the longest time and I was always buying the smallest phone possible because I like the portability. Mm -hmm. 
And now I kind of wish, you know, like after I used my dad's phone, I've been creeping up. Like I had the eight mm -hmm. and, you know, I went from, so my first iPhone was a 3GS to a 4S to a 5S. And, you know, they're all getting slightly bigger along the way. Mm -hmm. And then I will held out until an eight and then uh, went to the 11. Mm -hmm. But I've never gone the plus or the max size. Yeah. And of course, now there. So wait, now I forget. There's four different versions. There's the 12 and the 12 mini. 12 and the 12 mini. Mm -hmm. And then the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you want the largest size, you have to be a pro. You have days. to be pro. Yeah. Right. Well, and you know, I know that you bought your phone, your 11, and you didn't get the third camera in Correct. yours. You got the two. I did not get the pro. You didn't get the pro. Right. It is totally worth it from a picture taking standpoint. And, and I, I mean, and I'm a photographer, but so there's that aspect of it, but just not, not from just the standpoint of the photographer, but being able to zoom back a lot of times, I take a lot of technical pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to take a picture of a network rack. Well, I couldn't get it in my traditional phone, but being able to zoom back that, that telephoto difference is mm -hmm. making my pictures a lot better for for documentation purposes so now you have a business excuse why you need the third camera <laughs> you do i you know i i just haven't found that i take that many pictures like I, I mean, I take pictures, but it's usually uh, you know of what i'm eating or uh, you know i mean I never regret having a better camera. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing if you start just looking back at some of your photos that you took just on your last phone mm -hmm. and compare to them to what you're doing now. Yeah. It's always like an evolutionary leap forward. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I wouldn't regret that. I just, I can't really justify it. You know, I don't need the better camera. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I'll just, I'll just live for another year without it, you know, cause I'm not, I'm not up for a new phone until next year. I, I just got my 11. Um, but I, I do have a story to tell about that. <laughs> um, I don't think we covered this last week about Verizon. Did we? About my, my yeah. latest fun with Verizon? Yeah. The, go for bronze. Oh, we, yeah. Oh, that's right. We did cover that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not done yet. <laughs> Well, well, hold that thought for now. So okay, uh, yeah, carry on, carry on. I'll, I'll, I'll just add this to the uh, show notes here, and we'll get to it. So the, all of the new phones do support the 5G, which is a big deal. Uh, but I didn't know this, but it doesn't surprise me at all. 5G? Do you mean Verizon Wireless 5G? Uh, well, there are three types of 5G. <laughs> did you watch? Did you watch the Apple event on Tuesday, though? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So, this so enlighten was, me. Well, the the CEO for Verizon was there, uh -huh. and he's uh, I don't know if he's like Finnish or Norwegian. I couldn't quite tell by the accent and stuff. But it was like a co-branded marketing giant Verizon commercial. <laughs> and then even after that, Tim is talking about the new thing, and he's talking about you know like you know files will load so quickly on your Verizon five G iPhone. <laughs> it was just the, it's like, oh, it's all Verizon, Verizon, Verizon. So it was this huge partnership. Meanwhile, I still can't get phone calls from Apple support on my <laughs> Verizon wireless phone, but I digress. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so, 5G. But I didn't, I did not know this, uh, and I, I still don't fully understand it. It says it's worth mentioning that all four new iPhones have 5G. Not yes. only that, they have all three versions of 5G. <laughs> yes, there are different versions. <laughs> so I'm hoping that they're saying all of those phones support the three different 5Gs, like um, uh, you know, LTE and I, the I, whatever the different protocols are. Right. I'm assuming it supports all three protocols, and that's what that is saying. Yeah, I haven't dug into 5G really to, you know, like I'm like, okay, until I actually get it, I'm not going to worry about it. But, but, but this also, this does affect my, my thought because I was thinking about ditching Verizon. I was thinking actually about, you know, like paying off my phones and switching over to like Mint Mobile or something, which is a mm -hmm. T-Mobile reseller. 
um, but they don't exactly have 5G yet. But then again, does Verizon? You know, I don't even know what 5G means because it's a marketing thing, and you know, yeah. it's ah, yeah. So I've got to read the fine print. And again, since I'm not right now in the market for a new phone, I haven't mm -hmm. done that. Yeah. So the processor, uh, real quick on it. I know that you're uh, you're you're waiting on the ARM in the uh, in the uh, in the big computer. But so this processor, of course, I, I like this, uh, his language or he or she's language who wrote this, they said, it includes the A14 Bionic processor. The only, honestly, the only thing you need to know about this is it's faster than any smartphone chip and not by a little. <laughs> like that, no technical qualifications whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's faster and not by it's a faster. little. faster, that's it. And that <laughs> processor, I'm wondering, I'm assuming that that's the same one that's going to show up in uh, desktop chips, but I don't know, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It'll be it's interesting a, to see. It's the baby brother. Yeah. So I'm so. still rocking the, uh, what, the A12 processor on my iPhone 11, mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year's processor. Well, let's see, this is the 14, so the 13 would have, I don't even know. Is the 13 what I have, or did that come out in iPads? Anyway, I have last year's processor. It's exactly a year old. Yeah. So, so I don't have that yet. Um, yeah, I think I bought mine at the same time. I think I bought mine right before you bought yours. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to do the 12 because my, my oldest daughter is going to buy my old phone for whatever I owe left on it because she wants to replace her phone. Right. And you know, here's the thing: is like I had been planning on. I tried to get on the pay, you know, annual subscription-y kind of thing. So I'd get a new phone every year. Right. And I don't remember why I didn't do this, but I went through a really horrible transition to Verizon a year ago when I switched on to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole thing was like, I was dumping AT&T because they're like, oh, you're going to save all this money. It's going to be great. You're going to have, you know, this, that, and the other. It's going to be unlimited, blah, blah, blah. And then when they finally got along, it was like, yeah, you've got a four gig data plan. <laughs> and it cost $30 a month more. Four gig. Awesome. And I was like, okay, but I had a four gig data plan and now I'm paying more for essentially the same service. And at that point, you know, I, I had called them like five times complaining about this whole process. And then finally a manager was like, well, we can give you two extra gigs for a year. I said, fine, I'll take it. But anyway, I still keep on diving into the next story topic. So continue about Apple and the iPhone 12. Well, that's all I've got. Those were the, those were the highlights. Um, what, what I think is cool about it is that they're all using the same chip. Yeah. That's neat. So the iPhone 12 mini is essentially a smaller version. Now, mm -hmm. I was listening to the accidental, accidental tech podcast where they were doing a breakdown of this. And there are probably some differences uh, with respect to um, some, you know, scaling and stuff of the resolution, um, which, you know, I, I kind of got. But again, since I'm not in the market for it right now, I was sort of listening with half, you know, one ear. And mm -hmm. I was also, it was also midnight and I was doing my push-ups and about to fall asleep. <laughs> so, um, but I do think it's kind of cool that like, you know, essentially the biggest difference is form factor. And then in the major, you know, in the pro machines, you're getting, you know, better cameras, but essentially they're the same. Uh, you know, they, uh, at the, at the guts of it, you know, as far as the chip, the, uh, the CPU goes. And I think mm -hmm. that is, that's kind of cool because it just takes one more consideration out of the picture. Right. Now, on that note, I was looking at iPads again, because uh -huh. as you know, I have a little seven inch fire tablet. This thing is just barely capable of running Hangouts or a Zoom call. <laughs> it can't multitask its way out of a wet paper bag. So like, I have to kill every single other running process. It's a single task. It's like running MS-DOS. Mm -hmm. um, so my plan is I'm going to give this, instead of... Um, well, we're again, we're all over the map today. <laughs> um, but I'll get back to this on Prime Day in, in our next, in our, our third story. But um, I was looking at an iPad to replace this because, mm -hmm. like I said, this thing's inadequate. Now, in full fairness, it's a refurb and I paid $35 for it. Am yeah. I getting my money for it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Why would I want to replace it, right? Because one of my clients that I do private yoga lessons with, 
for whatever reason, we've tried uh, multiple video conferencing platforms. The thing that works best for them is FaceTime. Yeah. Well, they can see me just fine because they have an Apple TV, so they project everything up to the big screen. Mm -hmm. I can't see them because I'm looking at them on my iPhone across the room. And as we established, I don't have an iPhone Max. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, you know what, I should just bite the bullet. And even if I just buy an iPad mini, you know, I can keep that close and I could do, well, anyway. So that's where I was with that. So I was looking at iPads. And of course, there's the iPad, the iPad Pro, the bigger iPad Pro, the mm -hmm. iPad Air, the older iPad, the older iPad Air, the iPad mm -hmm. mini. It, I'm... I don't even know how many iPads Apple is currently selling, but you know, there's like, you got to look at them. There's screen size, there's storage, there's the chip, mm -hmm. there's the weight, there's all these different considerations. And now they have different connectors because they're finally starting to phase out the you know, lightning connectors and move towards USB-C. Yep. So I do kind of like, you know, sort of like the standardization on those things. But as someone else pointed out, you know, like Tim Cook just loves, just keep selling, you know, as long as they keep buying it, keep selling the product. Whereas, you know, Steve Jobs was all good, better, best. Mm -hmm. Done, you know, taking the choice out. So I'm like, all right, I, you know, it, that's a different, you know, it's a difference of the, the Tim Cook era versus the, the Steve Jobs era. Yeah. Yeah. So which one did you get? I didn't, I came really close, but I didn't. <laughs> Because I reminded myself that I'm still waiting for the Apple Silicon to come to MacBooks. And as you know, I do need a new computer. So I want to get one of the new MacBooks with the ARM processors. And I'm like, essentially, you know, buying an iPad, it's kind of like buying, or, you know, it, we expect, we don't know for sure, but it is kind of like what we're expecting the new MacBooks will sort of be like, except they're going to mm -hmm. have built-in keyboards. Well, we don't know. And so I just had to remind myself that, you know, functionally, I know the use cases are different, but, you know, my hope is that within the next couple months, mm -hmm. I'll be able to at least order my new MacBook because they said they're going to be shipping in 2020. <laughs> it's now mid-October 2020. So that means that they have to ship within the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, all right, I can wait for a little while longer. I'm not going to impulse buy right now. And if I do, yeah. you know, maybe I'll wait until Black Friday. If we still don't have an announcement by then, I'd be really shocked if we don't at least have an announcement from Apple, you know, by Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, so maybe I'll buy one then and hopefully still, you know, ride my student discount. So, you know, there you go. See, I got the, I have the iPad Pro. Is it 11? I think it's a, well, I forget. It's 10. Uh, it's it's smaller one. No, no, it's the bigger. I mean, bigger not one, okay. not the giant one. That, oh. that one, I, I've tried one of those, and those are just too big. Wait, uh, for... how many how many iPads are there now? Now I need to see. I just <laughs> so I'm going to Apple. I'm clicking on iPad, and okay, there's the iPad Pro. There's two of those. There's the iPad Air, iPad, and iPad Mini. And I click the compare link. Let's see all models. iPad Pro 12.9 inch iPad Pro 11 inch. So that is the small Pro. So I've got I've got the uh, I've got the 12 in, is that yeah, I've got the 12 inch. 12.9. 12.9. So that's the big one. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> no, I don't have the no, I, that's almost 13 inches obviously. Yeah. And I don't have that one because that's okay. I tried one of those. Yeah. It's and and I it's too it's too big for portability. It's too yeah. big to have in your hand, and, and it's it's too big to use as a tablet. Now, mm -hmm. friend of the show Scott Wilsey uses one, I think, as his like primary computer these days, and he's got the keyboard and the mouse and stuff, and you know he's rocking that thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when I buy a tablet, I want it to be a tablet. Yeah. And when I buy yeah. a laptop, I want it to be a laptop, and you know that's why I'm really excited about the you know the ARM processor, which I should say hopeful, hopefully excited. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so there's the iPad Pro 12.9, the iPad Pro 11. Uh, oh, and that's only second generation. Yeah. Um, with the, but they've got the same chip. So, okay, so those are still latest, the A12Z Bionic chips. There's the iPad Air, <clears throat> which is 10.9 inch display with the A14 Bionic chip. 
Hmm. Um, there's the iPad eighth generation with a 10.2 inch display with the A12 Bionic. There's the iPad mini fifth generation with a 7.9 inch display and the A12 Bionic. And then there's the iPad Pro 11 inch first generation with the A12 X Bionic. <laughs> Yeah. So they. Oh wait, wait, but wait. There's more. They <laughs> still they still show like the 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 third generation and second generation and first generation all the older versions on the website. But you can only buy down to the iPad Mini fifth generation. Okay. And again, as far as I'm concerned, the iPad Mini has always been my favorite form factor for a tablet. Okay. You know, it's significantly larger than a phone, but it's just small enough to be, you know, you can hold it comfortably in one hand. Mm -hmm. And that's something I really like. I don't want to have to be holding. If I have to hold a tablet with both hands, how am I supposed to type? <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, let's think about this, guys. I guess I didn't realize that, that there is a 11 Pro new that came out. I thought I had the latest, but I, I don't. I've got the 11 Pro behind that one. Uh, and, and I really like it a lot. I mean, I, I could use it all, like 90%. If, if I didn't have to remote into a computer from time to time, I wouldn't need the iPad at all. I mean, well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't need the computer at all. But you, you don't use your iPad for remote control? I can, but it's just not efficient enough. Hmm, it's, interesting. Okay. It's not as, I mean, when I'm constantly zooming around yeah. and, put, you know, I, I, I can't see exactly what I need to see. So I need to zoom in. Once I zoom in, I've lost my start menu. Now I got to pull here, start, pro, you know, I, it's just not as efficient if I have to remotely control a device. Yep. I, no, I, I, I know what you're saying. Um, it, it really, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing serious work, you know, you, you need a keyboard, mm -hmm. you need to have the screen on the machine that you're uh, using, your, your uh, has, has to have higher resolution or the same resolution as the target that you're controlling. Right. You know, now I would think though with your iPad, with the retina display that that wouldn't be a problem. It's not a problem. But it's tough to touch and it's tough to, you know, if you said, hey, Adam, I need you to reboot the server. No problem. I could yep. do that. Yes. Now, if you said, hey, Adam, this SQL server is just not running right. Yes. I can't do that on an uh, iPad. <laughs> totally. And, and again, this is where, you know, where some folks, uh, you know, friends of mine who shall remain nameless, we like, no, you can do everything you need on a tablet. I'm like, no, you can do everything you need on a tablet. Yeah, I cannot, and I'll bet you, you cannot do everything I need on a tablet. Yeah, you know, so I, I get that. Well, and you can do it, but it it is so inefficient. Oh, well, that's what I mean. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Im I am. There's an implied efficiently in yeah. my statement. Efficiently. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm like trying to use a touch screen for a non-touch operating system mm -hmm. can be challenging. Yeah. It definitely slows you down. Now, there are people though, like, like it's just like doing remote control, right? Remote control of another system, there's always a little bit of a lag there. Most users, I'll bet, don't perceive of the lag. They don't, right? Mm -hmm. they, they can't tell. I've, I've had plenty of clients over the years who can't tell the difference between a remote desktop once it's connected or a Citrix session from the real desktop. Yeah. That's not me. I am painfully aware of every lag and every, you know, like split second delay in a keystroke or window refresh or whatnot. There is a delay there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, you know, it is very significant. Other mm -hmm. times, not so much. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's there. And so, yeah, there are definitely, there, there's inefficiencies in doing that. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's Apple stuff uh, mm -hmm. as far as the new things. Now, remember, they, they did just, just have another new announcement just last month about, you know, all the, uh, about new iOS 14 and watchOS 7, which yep. just came out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to re reorder uh, our, our thing and give an update on that. Because as you know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I've been having some issues with Watch OS 7. Now, what's curious and funny to me, anyway, not funny to those people who have been experiencing it, apparently a lot of people were having serious battery drain issues as of Watch OS 7. Okay. For me, those went away. <laughs> yes. you know, I, was, I was having weird battery drain issues before uh, Watch OS 7, right? And uh, so I was happy that that went away. What happened to me was it sporadically stopped recording my workouts. I mean, it would record them. It wouldn't transfer them to the phone. Mm -hmm. So essentially they didn't happen. So I was sending you like <laughs> screen captures of my watch to prove, no, I really did run 10 K today. <laughs> yeah. right. um, but it was also not transferring um, the heart rate chart and it wasn't track uh, transferring the map of where I ran, mm -hmm. which really ticked me off because on Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday, no, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I went for my 10K. I zigged one time when I should have zagged. I ended up in Winchester. And when I was <laughs> finished my 10K, I stopped thinking I was not where I was. And I was actually three and a half miles from home. <laughs> so I ran, you know, six or so miles. And then I walked another three and a half to get home. And it sucked because it was in the 50s and it was overcast and it started getting windy. That's great weather for running. Horrible <laughs> weather for walking in shorts in a sweaty t-shirt. <laughs> so I was disappointed because I wanted to show you the map. Like, look where I went today. <laughs> do that. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. I was waiting for that bug fix. It did not come. No. What they did is they officially documented the fix, which is back up and unpair the watch. Back up and factory reset your phone, restore the phone, restore the watch. And it works. And it works. <laughs> we can't fix it, but we have a procedure. Bingo. <laughs> and it, it does kind of suck because certain, you know, some of my applications are sensitive to the fact that they've been restored, like secure security software, like yeah. secure mail, Citrix secure hub. Mm -hmm. Signal Private Messenger, mm -hmm. um, and also some settings. Like I had customized the font sizes and, uh, and Siri and um, health preferences because there's a lot of stuff that uh, Face ID, you mm -hmm. know, all that stuff is kept local to the device. Yeah. So when you wipe and do a restore, you've got to reset all those things. So it's, you know, yeah, first world problems. I get it. <laughs> it's still annoying. <laughs> yeah. So I went through the annoyance, but now I'm happy that I have a working watch. And mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I have been doing with the newest version is using the sleep tracker on the watch. So mm -hmm. now Apple has built in sleep tracking to uh, watch OS as of seven. And it's pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good. I hadn't used one because I didn't want to, you know, I was being cheap. It was just a mental thing, but I didn't want to pay like $3 for an app convinced I wasn't going to use it because I can't sleep with a watch on. I was one of those people. I can't sleep with a watch on. I am really surprised the watch doesn't disturb my sleep at all. Yeah. I thought it would. It doesn't. It does not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been tracking it since the upgrade to watch OS 7. And um, I have been tracking my sleep. And just, it, it's like, you know, what gets measured gets mannered, managed. I think mm -hmm. that was Richard Drucker who said that. Just the fact that I've been watching it, um, I've been increasing my sleep time and getting mm -hmm. better sleep. So it's kind of cool. Now, the last two nights are kind of an exception because as you noticed, two nights <laughs> in a row, I was up past midnight. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, uh, but, but as a result too, I was able to get my, uh, my hundred pushups in before everybody else. <laughs> Hacking the <Yeah>. system. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, interesting, but I, I really do like the sleep tracking, you know, feature. I'm, there are mm -hmm. plenty, I'm sure there are better things if I was to, you know, plunk down the two or $3 for some of the premium sleep tracker <laughs> apps, I could probably get more out of it. But the built-in stuff works pretty well. You know, you set your sleep schedule in iOS and the mm -hmm. watch just tracks it. And around bedtime, it tells you, you can have it like prep you for bed and tell you, 
You could make an automation to even like, you know, play some soothing music or something or dim the lights if you have the home kit integration, which mm -hmm. I don't because I use the lady in the tube, not the <laughs> moron in the phone. And, um, but yeah, I've got, you know, my sleep time has been going, getting better. And um, again, just paying attention to it has been, the, you know, been the, the only real, real major change and, you know, mm -hmm. wearing a watch. So, it's well, you know, so I'm I'm still in the Fitbit. I I live the Fitbit world, yep. and they must have had some update. Of course, I don't pay attention to it as much as you do. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'm kind of like, ah, it doesn't work, and I go on. <laughs> you know, it, I'm like it's not going to bother me. But that thing doesn't work. Uh, but one of the things mine has done is it stopped notifying me when I need to move if I haven't completed the steps in the hour, it just stopped notifying me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was notifying me, but I was setting the vibration on high and I was setting it, you know, and I, when I was testing the vibration, it would go, but I couldn't feel the vibration anymore. And it's like, and it, it just stopped notifying me. Well, one day it just started back up. <laughs> I was so, going to say, so are you some, sure you're just not desensitized to it? <laughs> some update occurred and now it's working again. And so yesterday I had a workout that was the, the one that I sent you. It had five big spikes. So you had a, a 500 meter run and then uh, Olympic overhead squat and then burpees. Well, every time I take off running, that stupid watch kept saying, are you running? Do you want me to start tracking you running? Like, it's only 500 meters. Stop bothering me. <laughs> So, but every so, time I took off, it wanted to record it. So could you not just like say I'm doing a workout right now? I could have. Yeah, I could have. But I was so, I couldn't do it while trying to work out. You know, if I, if I wanted to do it, I should have started it before I started. But I was, uh, I was, I was in it then. Gotcha. <laughs> and it was a time cap and I didn't want to get capped yeah. out. Oh yeah. yeah, no, I mean, that's like once I start running, I hate having to pause or stop to fiddle with my watch. Mm -hmm. So on that note, um, again, I was chatting with Scott yesterday and he's been, you know, he was going on like, I was talking about the heart rate stuff because I sent you a screenshot of my, my first post reset wa workout. Yeah. So you're and not as a I zombie. suspected, you know, we talked about this too. It was like, you know, I was recording my, when I, when I started to amp up the 180 steps per minute, my heart rate was routinely being recorded in the 190s. Uh -huh. And that was generally being, you know, no matter which way I calculated it, it was showing up as like, dude, that's too much for you. Mm -hmm. right? You know, given my age, that's supposed to be in the danger zone, even if you are in really good shape. Right. Well, looking at it, I would notice that sometime as I was running, it would get better over time. It would get, the, the heart rate would lower. Mm -hmm. But if you look at my workout from yesterday, I start off and like in the first mile or so, it had me at 188 beats per minute fairly consistently. And uh -huh. then suddenly, boom, drops down and it's in the 150s for the rest of the, the 10K. <laughs> well, I did not suddenly all of a sudden like meditate, let's lower my heart rate. And I didn't <laughs> adjust my pace seriously. You know, like I, I just slowed down. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't do anything. You know, yeah. like I was like, I ran because I did about half of my run, a little over 5K, I actually listened to podcasts. Mm -hmm. So I was periodically glancing at the, the watch and just trying to keep my own cadence. Mm -hmm. And actually, for most of that, I was a little higher than 180 steps per minute. Yeah. Then after that, I, about halfway through, I put on a, a playlist. Mm -hmm. And so when I have, you know, finished it, I was 179 steps per minute average so i did pretty good without you know without the um the music mm -hmm. but it's hilarious when you look at the chart you know it's just going along it's like heart rate boom, 180 190 <laughs> 155 yeah nice it, well you, you'd think that's something like i was doing a workout like you you know 500 meters oh stop you know yeah <laughs> well i was talking to uh, a former client they got bought out and uh, the woman who worked there, she was telling me, she said, well, her Fitbit started telling her that she was having heart problems because it had the heart monitor and she was showing up at like 160 beats per minute while sitting in a chair. 
Mm -hmm. And she found out, well, it gave her the indicator uh, that she was having thyroid issues. And so she had, I mean, she had a legitimate issue that the, the Fitbit actually found for her. And it mm -hmm. actually alerted her like, your heart rate's way too high for too yep. long. Yep. <laughs> I enabled those features. So again, you know, this new stuff that came with watch OS seven is like hand washing reminders and a hand washing <laughs> timer. So when it detects that you're doing hand washing movements, mm -hmm. like it will then, I think it's that and microphone, like when it hears the sound of running water, because mm -hmm. I'm doing hand washing movements right now and it's not doing anything, mm -hmm. but you start. And after about five seconds, it starts a timer. Yeah, I won't do it now. So it must be using the microphone also to sense the presence of water. Um, but it's kind of cool. I was wondering, like, is it going to catch it? But it, it catches it and it starts. Like every time I've looked at the counter, it's down at like uh, 16 or 15 seconds to go. Mm -hmm. So it detects and then it starts and it adjusts for the time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. So, you know, I'm liking that. Um, huh. I also, with uh, watchOS 7, you can now adjust your target minutes per day of workout which used to be frozen at 30 because uh -huh. Apple the time you know, determined that you should work out for at least 30 minutes a day. Every day. Everyone should. Well, I bumped mine up to 60. <laughs> they used to let you set your move goal. So you could mm -hmm. set that, you know, like I think the default was like 300 calories and I have it at six. Mm -hmm. um, you can also lower or uh, adjust your stand hours goal. Mm -hmm. I cranked mine down to six. <laughs> Because as we've established, the stand ring on the Apple Watch is the swing your arms ring <laughs> or the walk around ring. But I have a standing desk mm -hmm. and I can't tell you the number of times that I have been standing and for like three hours in a row and gotten zero credit for it. <laughs> so it just annoys me. So I turn it off because mm -hmm. I... I always stand way more than 12 hours per day. Mm -hmm. So I don't need a reminder on that one, but cranking it down to six makes it tolerable, you know, cause they just told me time to stand. I'm like, great, thank you. I just got my, uh, did I just get my sixth or my fifth hour? I don't know. Uh, I only got hour number five because two of the other hours this morning apparently don't count yet. <laughs> and this one doesn't count yet. So I'm just gonna swing my arms around a little bit and I'll <laughs> close that ring now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so real quick recap on Verizon. Mm -hmm. um, they've been texting me, telling me that I owe money on the account. Um, I chatted with them a few days ago and they said, no, you don't know anything. That was probably just a spam call, a phishing link. Thanks for reporting it. I'll send it on to our security <laughs> team. Then today, <laughs> Verizon called me to say that your account is past due. Mm. So I played, you know, like, all right, let's play this game. You know, I played the button. Look, no, it doesn't sound like a fish. Sounds legit, right? So then I called Verizon. Verizon, you call them. They insist on switching you to a chat. <laughs> and so I hung up and then called them back again and just mashed the, the keypad until they finally transferred me to a representative. <laughs> Talk to a guy who swears that there is no payment due on my account. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And he said, can you send me that in email? Because here's my fear. Like you're still going to be dunning me. And suddenly my phone's just going to stop working soon. Yep. You guys are telling me I owe you this money. I'm telling you that, you know, they say, thank you for your payment of this amount. You can't find a payment for that amount, nor can you find me that I owe you any money. Do you understand why I'm a little concerned? <laughs> yeah. Can you so, see what's going on here? I mean, I have a backup cell phone with a different carrier. So I was tempted to not, you know, just let it play out and just let them figure it out. You know, maybe they just need a few days. But while I was chatting with this other person the other day, she was very helpful. And she said, oh, I also have some good news for you. Um, for only like $2 a month more or something, we can uh, upgrade your plan to 10 gigabytes of data per month. Nice. This obviously was leading up to the big 5G announcement. <laughs> yeah. So now I was like, great. Now that it'll, it'll, it'll only take me four minutes to burn through my entire data plan on 5G, whereas it used to take five yeah. you know, or 10. But yeah, I was like, for three gigs, yes, I will take that because um, one of my favorite um, uh, podcasts also shows up on Twitch. And uh, since I pay for it, I get access to it live that comes out on Friday nights. Yeah. 
or I have a full week because the podcast doesn't come out for at least a week later. So I like to stream it. And sometimes I'll do that while I'm out riding my bike or driving in the car. And with Twitch, you can't download and save the files. So you have to take it live over the air. Mm -hmm. And even if I set it to audio, there were a bunch of back episodes that I was playing. So last month, I came very close to exceeding my six gig for the first time. So I was like, <laughs> I'll take that, you know, 10 gigs, that's, that's much better. So that was the help for Verizon. But again, they had to stumble on the whole billing fiasco. Yeah, I didn't even, I don't, I have unlimited. I, I thought I was getting unlimited. <laughs> but that was last year's episode. So let's not cover that again. <laughs> yeah. How about something more fun? Did you buy anything from Amazon a couple of days ago? No, I didn't. I looked and, you know, I started, I started looking at the sales and I'm like, I hate this. I hate browsing through things to look to see if there's something I want to buy. I either want to buy something or I don't. I don't want to shop. And yep. I just I was like, no, there's nothing I need that I see immediately and I'm not going to take the time. So for me, different story, as you may remember, uh, I'm waiting <laughs> ever so patiently for my parents to get fiber optics to their home. Right. And when they do, we're going to cancel their, you know, we're going to switch their phone provider over to the, to the current provider, or to the, to the fiber provider. And we're going to cancel their direct TV satellite dish and go with YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. And if I understand it correctly, you know, I told my dad, look, we'll split it. So I'm going to get, you know, I'll buy the YouTube and I think you can share it with like six family members or something like that mm -hmm. for 65 bucks a month. Well, it's more money for me, but I'll have access to stuff when I want to. Their, their you know, TV drops from like $100 a month if we split it to like 30 bucks or 35 bucks a month. And, you know, they'll get plenty of stuff on YouTube. So great. Well, my plan was to just buy them a couple of uh, Fire TV sticks and use that. Mm -hmm. And I've had them sitting in my cart waiting for several weeks. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I saved like 40 bucks on them. So I got like, essentially got them at half price. Do you know that there's a YouTube TV stick? Yes, I did. And I okay. saw that you can get it for free if you got like a month or something like that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Um, I am just... Other than Gmail, I'm not really in the Google ecosystem. I even mm -hmm. have two of the, I have three of their minis. I have two Google Home minis and a Nest Home mini. And I just haven't gotten around to setting them up. I tried to move, um, uh, to, uh, move off of A Word on my Sonos mm -hmm. and um, you know, put it to Google. And it was just too confusing having two assistants in the house. Mm -hmm. So I just, I was like, nope. And I even took them up to my parents' house and I tried to set them up, but it was so, um, their internet was just too slow. I couldn't effectively really configure those things. Yep. And I was like, all right. So, I mean, maybe I would give it another go, but like me having the, um, the Kindle, uh, I mean the, uh, the Amazon ecosystem and the fire TV sticks, I know how it works. I can, you know, probably if I can't walk my dad through, you know, an issue, I can walk one of my mom's caretakers through resetting something remotely if I have to. <laughs> so it's just easier for me to keep them in something I know. So, yeah. But yeah, I did. A friend of mine told me like, oh, Google just, you know, they're giving away the free Google, you know, stick thing, which I guess sounds like a Chromecast on steroids. Yeah, I just looked at it. It's just Chromecast. I mean, yeah. it, or it is a Chromecast, but it's you know, dedicated to the YouTube, but they've right. already, I mean, it came with YouTube before because they are right. YouTube and like, well, okay. Yep. But my plan, you know, my plan, my dad was talking, talking about the TV stuff. He was like, well, you know, but you know, your mom likes to watch these TV channels. I'm like, dad, mom will find other TV. Ch if they don't have this very specific show, she'll find other things she likes. You know, like, well, she likes to listen to this music station. Dad, have you heard of Spotify? <laughs> yeah no you haven't right i know okay yeah. but like there are other options out there you know you don't mm -hmm. need to use this you don't need to pick up this specific telephone to make a phone call it's mm -hmm. okay you know 
So, uh, and actually he's been, you know, very like, oh yeah, okay. You know, not, not as trepidatious as I thought he was going to be. So I'm, I'm hot, mm -hmm. optimistic for this move. So, cool. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of the fiber provider actually getting their butts in gear and, you know, and they are in gear, but just getting fiber to the house and lighting mm -hmm. it up. So yeah. I take that back. It's to the house. We're just waiting for them to light it up. Okay. So that's the only thing you got on Prime Day? Uh, that's the only thing. I think I might have bought something else that day, but that was the only thing on sale. Yeah. Yeah. I bought, uh, I bought something. I always buy things that I need and I bought something, but it wasn't on prime yeah. day. And yeah. I started looking, I was like, there's computers. Oh, good. Then there's monitors. I'm like, oh, I could use another 27 inch monitor, but I don't really need another 27 inch monitor. Bingo. I'd, I'd save $20. So what? I don't, now I gotta, it's gonna cost me, I gotta store it somewhere because I don't need it right now. No, I'm not gonna buy anything. What am I, I doing here? Exactly. <laughs> and I, for a moment though, I looked and I noticed that I think it's, um, there are some Samsung uh, TVs that have the, you know, the Fire TV functionality mm -hmm. built into the TV. Yeah. I thought about buying them one of those, mm -hmm. but you know, the, the TV they have now is perfectly fine. I asked him, get me the dimensions. You know, I, I was like, all right, so I could pay like $250, which is like $200 more just to get them a slightly larger TV. Eh, it's not worth it. Yeah. So I didn't bother doing that. Um, but, and I also resisted the, uh, the temptation to get uh, an Echo Show for them. Mm -hmm. Because what I will do next time, because I was disappointed because they weren't using, I bought this tablet for them. Yeah. So that my dad could say, a word, call Peter. Mm -hmm. And I could see my mom as a result of that, you know, because mm -hmm. I, bugs the heck out of me my dad will call or you know talking and say hey just talk to your mom for a second and he'll hand her the phone now my mom can't speak <laughs> so she likes hearing my voice i understand that but my dad he you know just takes the phone and holds it to her like okay can you tell tell dad that we're done talking now could you just, you know can you pat <laughs> away or something or what so i figured you know like if i can see my mom and see my dad when we're talking, it's easier. Well, yeah. this is why I almost bought the iPad because I was going to buy it myself, ditch this thing, leave this, and just permanently mount it and keep it plugged in mm -hmm. next to my mom's bedside mm -hmm. so that I can say a word, call Nick, mm -hmm. and have it call my dad You know, with a video call right there. <laughs> So instead of buying a, you know, a $50 on sale Echo Show, I can just repurpose this to be that. Mm -hmm. The trick is that they need to keep this thing plugged in. So that's mm -hmm. why I have to like permanent, permanently affix it, you know, to where it's going to be. Yeah. Because the last time I went up there and found this sitting under a pile of newspapers, unplugged under a, with a pile of dust. So, <laughs> you know. And it's the thing, see, we, we covered this a couple of months ago and there was an article saying that, you know, like old people can use technology. It's just <laughs> that they just don't see the value. So they're mm -hmm. like, whatever, I don't get it. Yeah. Like here I, and here I thought you would like seeing your son. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to talk to you. I don't want yeah. to see you. Uh, apparently, <laughs> that's it. You know, there you go. So. Actually, I just want you to hear, I want to hear you ramble. Yeah. You should listen to my podcast, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and you know what when we get them the fire tv stick they can play it off the website yeah just straight off the site <laughs> brilliant <laughs> that's no i'm really that's brilliant adam that's great i love that thank you totally gonna do that <laughs> so our, our our listenership has just doubled and going up through the roof <laughs> 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 we're talking to you dear listener and mom and dad oh no that means, now i gotta watch what i say oh well you know don't tell them about every episode <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Beautiful. you know what i need i need a um i need remote remote control for a fire tv mm -hmm. i don't think that exists mm -mm. it'd be handy so. if it did though mm -hmm. so yeah, the uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was Prime Day. Uh, mm -hmm. Exercise updates. Mm -hmm. So um, my midweek run, which was on Tuesday, I guess, was my my second run of the week. 
um, I topped out at uh, 5K mm -hmm. because it was rainy and cold and just yucky. Yeah. So I came back home and started working on the punching bag, which is something that I just barely started doing again last week. Mm -hmm. I've had this punching bag sitting, hanging there in my basement for literally years and never used it. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I think it's time, given that I'm not actively practicing Krav Maga and Jiu Jitsu anymore. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when I work, when I'm really going at it on this thing, you know, I'm, we're talking like 300 calories per 30 minutes. I'm right. working just about as hard as running. Mm -hmm. So it's a great workout. Um, so I've been doing that fairly regularly. I've used it a few times and that's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that in addition to the hundred pushups and you know, again, thank you for, for looping me into that. As you know, mm -hmm. I extended that, uh, that challenge to a bunch of friends. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. I mean, you see those who are like the real go-getters in there. And then you see the others who are like, oh, yeah, uh, I've been meaning to get back to that. Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start this weekend. Oh, I'm on vacation. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of reminds me of some folks in other accountability groups, <laughs> yeah. myself included, admittedly, you know, it's just like, it's just not really your thing. I was like, guys, I mean, don't, and then one was, you know, like, oh no, I was playing soccer today. I'm like, so what? Yeah. <laughs> what, what does one have to do with the other? The challenge is do a hundred pushups. Now, mm -hmm. when Jason says, I did 20 chaturangas in yoga. Does that count? I say, yes, because that is a push-up. Mm -hmm. When you say no push-ups for me today because I bench pressed how much? Uh, 275. And you weigh how much? 225. That counts. <laughs> right now, I didn't know how many sets you did, but like... Yeah. I'll, I'll grant a waiver for that. If you're, you know, if you're bench pressing more than your own weight, that, that's, that's, a, that's a pass. But you know, someone's like, why do you need to do push-ups? You just ran 10K today. It's like, last time I checked, I wasn't using my, my upper body in that 10K. Mm -hmm. you know? like the challenge is do 100 push-ups. Yeah. Full stop. Now, yeah. we don't say what kind of push-ups. We don't say that they have to be ranger style push-ups or Navy SEAL push-ups or Aztec push-ups. Mm -hmm. I'll even take wall presses. Mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who's not in the group, but she's been you know, doing it as well. Mm -hmm. She has Lyme disease, so her endurance and stuff, it's very low. It's like, right. you do wall presses. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh yeah, I can do those. I'm like, do those. Do those, yeah. You know, start, start slow, start easy. I mean, there was, there was one day when I was really feeling you know i have had pain in the shoulders and stuff mm -hmm. i did knees down push-ups mm -hmm. i still did a hundred of them you know were they my best set ever no was it as quite you know as much of a challenge no did i do 100 push-ups yes i did and that yeah. was the point it's modified right. yep so Modified's yeah it's modified, okay. but i still did it so there you go yeah yeah, so, yeah it's, it's kind of funny though because normally Adam would usually finish and, you know, sometimes I would squeak a set of 10 or 20 or even 50 in, and then you would come back. You're like, yep, did my hundred. Like, ah! <laughs> so then we invited, uh, you know, my, one of my colleagues, Josh into it and he's up early this morning. And he's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'll just add that to my daily routine. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. And you know, he's like right off the bat hundred. And he's like, yep. Okay. And then of course we have Brad in the group who's the overachiever. He's, you know, for the last couple of days, he's done 200 push-ups per day. <laughs> but then I was up past midnight and I was just like, oh, you know what? I can do this. And I just stuck in my <laughs> I'll be you know, done right before bed. And I got to tell you, I slept better doing some work right before bed. Mm -hmm. And they don't hurt as much. Like when I do them first thing, that first set is oh, yeah. the hardest getting moving. It's like, oh, ow, this, oh. But then you get through it, you know, after that mm -hmm. first set, the second set's easier, the third set's easier, and mm -hmm. you know, but it, it really takes some time to get moving. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So my form, I always, I, I do my push-ups as if you were going to shame me about my form, you know. Ah, so, good. Yes. Because, <laughs> like, that's how, you know, so I, every one of them, I try, I mean, I I lock out at the top. I get my nose. I touch my nose. I make sure my body's straight. I'm looking down. You know, I'm not flexing. I'm not arcing. You know, mm -hmm. those those are important. So, yep. yeah. So I, I've been. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I, like I said, I just make sure that I try to do every push up as if somebody's watching me to make sure that I'm doing them right. Right. So I look, there's this guy who's just insane. He's like the push up monster on YouTube. I got to find his channel. Uh, this guy looks like he's razor thin, shaved head, goatee. You know, he looks like he's literally looks like he's skin, muscle, and bones. Mm -hmm. And he, he had, he did a video I saw a few years ago. I haven't been able to find it. But he has like every variation of push-ups. Mm -hmm. He's doing these insane up against the wall push-ups with, you know, like vertical handstand push-ups. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, no, not even, yeah. you know. But he demonstrates like, you know, the, like you're supposed to keep your head up looking forward when you're mm -hmm. doing them. And that keeps, you know, the rest of your spine aligned. And I'm also, you know, like cognizant is like, am I letting my, my core sag down? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I'm trying, do I try to go chest to? And I don't always, you know, like sometimes I'm doing like chaturanga style yoga push-ups. Mm -hmm. So I'm only coming like halfway down and halfway up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm paying attention to form, keeping the core engaged, not piking, you know, arching your butt up in the air, but also not <laughs> yeah. letting it sag and, Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's good. You know, you got to be your own critic. And that's, that's one thing I've been thinking about too. Like when I'm, when I'm, you know, hitting the, the punching bag, mm -hmm. I'm not training with crop. And this is what my teacher was saying, like after our black belt test is like, you have to be your own instructor now. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to watch what you're doing and stuff. And I have enough body awareness. I can feel like I'm too close, you know, like I'm punching, I'm not getting full extension. Right. You know, I'm like only hitting at about 75% because I'm like, trying to punch it with my nose, mm -hmm. you know? So you got, once you develop that enough, you know, proprioception and interoception with your body, you can start to be your own critic. And, and that's something that I sort of, I try to bring out in my yoga classes. Mm -hmm. you know, I, try, I just start inviting my students, like, pay attention. What mm -hmm. are you feeling? Yeah. You know? And, and I don't, you know, every now, like maybe every sixth class or so, I'll say, as you start to pay a little more attention to what you're feeling, now factor that in like what does that mean mm -hmm. you know like you may know it's like i notice now i have an instep you know or i have hit you know i have my feet rotate off to, to the same side mm -hmm. what does that mean well it's it's a symptom of hip rotation it's a mm -hmm. symptom of my knee injury you know or it's a contributing factor to my knee injury it mm -hmm. means i need to be aware when i'm running of different things you know so it's like you start to pay attention the more you realize the more you realize <laughs> yeah <laughs> Or you know, and knowing you know. is half the battle. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think we have a nifty today. Do you have anything nifty? Uh, do I have anything? I, I thought we had plenty of holdover nifties yeah. that we never have gotten to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really. Um, although I, I will share one thing. Um, I, no, I don't have a nifty because I don't actually have it. So I, um, yeah, I don't think I do. Yeah. Well, that's okay. It's not that well, nifty. Watch <laughs> OS 7. Watch OS 7. It's, Watch it's OS 7.0.2. Gotten, it's gotten niftier. It's gotten niftier, yes. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, no, I guess that's that. So uh, on that note, should we just uh, take us out? I think I think we, I think I shall. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. Dear listener, we do want your feedback. If you'd like to discuss a particular topic, you can drop us a line at www.blurringthelinespodcast.com and our respective websites at paradigmcc.com, yogawithpeter.com, or sublimecomp.com. And uh, we had a big spike in listeners uh, two weeks ago. Were they Russian? No. There were, there were 40, 40 different downloads all in one day, which was kind of unusual. Wow. Yeah. Did you notice the, 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 the tweet that I, uh, yeah, I should have tweet. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you now have a, a, a potential Russian girlfriend following you. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's like, there's an emergency in her panties. She said, so <laughs> what, what all was, over that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, okay. that, yeah, that could be nothing good. I mean, <laughs> That could be really bad. <laughs> Nothing could go. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, there where, you go. Where do they go? Oh, I'm here because I'm too lazy to find my soulmate. And my mom said that I'm getting old. 
<laughs> that was one of the screenshots you sent me. Yep. <laughs> my well, mom yeah. says I'm getting old, which is and why. My mom says I'm getting old. I'm like, well, that obviously just reeks of desperation. I need to, I need to call that right now. Well, you know. Oh, brother. Wanna, All right, that's it. We're out of here. If you want to have a happy life, have a desperate wife. I, happy life, desperate girlfriend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I am going to hit the big red button. <laughs>